guys, welcome back. Here's where all the decent heathens leave the channel. You know Odin's been trying to drag me back into heathenry, back in heathenry, and also he's been poking with Gunnar. And um, because of the stroke and because I just didn't know any better when I was growing up, I didn't realize something until I made a video for you guys. And it was about a half hour long, but we're going to try to condense it. I thought I had imposter syndrome for all the typical reasons. I haven't written five books, I don't speak four languages, I haven't traveled the world and been to places significant to working with Nordic gods. That's not really why I have imposter syndrome. Um, you know my father was a bad man when I was growing up, and he was abusive, but the one way to get on his good side and not be abused was to do as dad did. And he was a member, I realized doing the video, he was a member of a party. He never brought any of the stuff home. He kept it, I think, locked in a drawer at work. So maybe he got the party through work. But he was a member of a certain party, you know, um, fancy people. And um, I, 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 I... He came home one day, and I, I, I can't remember all the conversation, but he told my mom, no, 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 they're not like that. This is good. This would get him further ahead at work or, or, or something. It would be a good connection. These people could take him places, and that's how they explained it. My father is very logical. If you could explain something logically to my father, he would go do it. And for years... My father would introduce me to various friends of his, and the friends would have booths at these, you know, he'd take me to flea markets and that, or he'd take me to gun shows, and they would always have booths for the German side of the, the war, and I never thought it was strange. And they especially would have stuff for a certain segment that had nothing to do with the military branch. Do we all understand what I'm talking about? And they would even, you know, give pins to me. Sometimes they would just give me pins. Sometimes I would buy one. And it was almost like buying one was like initiating me into a club. And he would say, she, she's she's part of it now. And, damn it. And, you know, they would dress me up and they would coo about what a good German officer I was going to be and everything else. And my father raised me as a Nazi, and I'm not okay with that. And, you know, it really hit me that there was a reason these people had these distinctive black and red flags, and there was a reason they had the armbands, and there was a reason that they never talked about the other side. And, you know, my father was grooming me to believe Hitler was coming back someday, that, you know, the Fuhrer was so fantastic that he could come back from death, and he would come back and lead us. And, there was going to be this glorious utopia, and, you know, he would say, don't make friends with X, Y, and Z people, because these people are going to be taken away when the Fuhrer comes back, and, you know, um, it will be a perfectly white, perfectly utopia land, and everything will be peace. There will never have to be war again, because the Fuhrer's plan is going to be realized. And the only thing that probably saved me from being a Nazi today and probably being in prison somewhere is that he had a falling out with the Nazis. And all of a sudden we were all American all the way, John Wayne, everything else, threw away all the Nazi memorabilia. Just keep a little bit of it because he still was convinced the wrong side won the war. Um, I guess not much of an American. And, you know, um... It was it was one of those things where then when I found, you know, eons in the day ago, I found a book by a folkish heathen. Um, my dad was more than happy to have me worship the gods of my people. And um, Odin kind of met me at the door and told me to fuck off. And the, the Norse gods really were interested because I was approaching them down that path. Um, and my father couldn't figure out why being a Nazi would have anything to do with them not liking me. And, you know, other people's knowledge may vary, but it was like, fuck off, Nazi scum. And Odin himself met me at the door. He's like, no, fuck you. And Loki and the gods had been calling my brother but and me, but not down a Nazi path, to be sure. And, you know, Loki was the one that they had already been with me, and I didn't realize that. But they weren't going to reveal themselves until my father dropped out of the Nazi party and it was no longer grooming me to be a Nazi and then 
you know, it's confusing to me because you see the party idolized in everything from heavy metal to video games, and you, you kind of sometimes wonder what side people are on because people say they hate them, and yet they're idolized in music, they're, they're featured in entertainment, and everything else. And, you know, they're starting, as time goes on, to get that cool factor that, say, Darth Vader has, and some people kind of act like they're just as real, like the war didn't actually happen, because it's, you know, now it's, you know, it's coming up to almost a century mark, you know, sooner than we think, and people are acting like it's, it, they were the cool side, you know, because they were the bad guys, so therefore they have that, that bad guy appeal, and to be sure they were not the good guys, or cool, or anything else, but I've noticed that happening. And finally today, I'm like, this is why I can never be a heathen. I was groomed to be a Nazi. There's no room in, you know, you know, there's a saying, there's no Nazis in Valhalla. And I'm like, this is exactly why I can't be a heathen. This is why I shouldn't wear the hammer. This is where all the kill feelings are coming from. And I, I told Odin, I said, I can't serve you. I was a Nazi. I didn't know I was a Nazi. I was just told I was being a good German soldier, which was odd come to think of it growing up in America, but I was beat a lot, so you do whatever ends the beatings, and you know, it was, it was odd, and it's still odd, because you would have sworn my, my father was one of, you know, Odin's officers reborn, one of the high ones, because in fact, he even said once or twice he thought he was so-and-so or such-and-such, and he thought he saw that in me, too. He thought he saw one of the scientists in me. Um, I grew up in a very strange and frightening household. And yeah, we would go do all American things, too, because somehow in my father's brain, Americans were just a different type of Nazi, so it was okay to have all the red, white, and blue everywhere. Then he got in a fight with them, in typical German that he was, fuck the Nazis and everything they stand for, and kill a Nazi when you see them. Okay, father. We're not Nazis now. I didn't realize we were, but okay. It was just these strange friends my father had. And um, you get a lot of people that they get into collecting World War II memorabilia, and then they, not everyone, but then there's nothing wrong with collecting that kind of memorabilia, but then when it becomes a lifestyle and you become the ideology and you start joining secret groups, then then it becomes it becomes something else. Um, and my father served in the military. I don't know if he had a bad experience in the army, because my mother said there, my father was the sweetest, gentlest, kindest man you would have ever met. He never would have raised his voice. He went in the army, and he came out, and he came out changed. I don't know if something happened to him. I don't know if they gave them drugs at the time, because they, 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 the army has given drugs to the soldiers that have, you know, fucked them up seven ways from Sunday. I knew a girl in college that it happened to her her boyfriend he was in, and he was totally fine. And then they came around with these weird pills, and they said, this is a new thing for, you know, serving over here. This will make you better. And, you know, they really fucked that kid over. And the only thing I can think of is that it, they gave him something because they would have them go in for shots and that, my father would say. And... They must have gave him something, and they must have really made a basket case out of my father. Um, I don't know. And I just thank the gods that he didn't go on. They wanted him to be a sharpshooter. I'm like, can you imagine somebody as mentally unstable as my father having the skills of a sharpshooter and having Nazi sympathies? That, that wouldn't have ended well for anybody. So it's... It's really surreal, and, you know, every so often YouTube points to a certain infamous YouTuber and says, you know, if you did this, you would be, you would probably have more people. Be exciting, be daring, and they, they use this person as an example of what success on YouTube looks like. And I'm like, maybe you don't want to be telling someone that was raised to be a Nazi I should dress up as a Nazi, because that's not going to work out well. That's not going to work out well as well, because I might put on the uniform and like it a little too much. God, my last favorite um, Stephen King film was Ap People, because if only. Um, except for the part where it all went wrong. And my dad will point out, you know, this is where it should have went right. And if he would have only had actual German discipline. And his his fault was he took a child that wasn't German or something. 
Damn. And, and you know, that's why I feel I shouldn't be in heathen range, shouldn't have anything to do with the Norse gods. I, I don't think the bad reaction from the Roman gods had anything to do with that, because they were reacting to me as a heathen, but like a long time ago heathen. And I said, this is probably why I shouldn't serve you. Uh, and you know this. And, and, and of course he knows it. He was the one that met me at the door and told me to fuck off if I was coming down that path. But it's it's weird. And I said, what if you drag me into heathenry? That's my biggest fear of being a heathen, to put all my cards on the table, is that I'm going to become folkish heathen. And that I'm going to go, you know, fit very well into that. My father groomed me for that. My father groomed me to have zero fucks for people other than, you know, what he considered our people and to not care about their problems. In fact, to step over them if it were for the glory of the utopia we were going to. So I'm very familiar with their spiel of a white utopia and white people are special and more fragile and we're just going to have to step over a few people to to get to that white utopia i'm very f familiar with it because i was raised in it i was you know raised to believe it thank the gods my mother was the polar opposite my mother was the one that was like no all people are beautiful all people are kind you know all people are one and she was the one that encouraged me to have you know friends from all over and i did like we had for, for, i had friends not because my mother told me but naturally because it was a mixed area had friends from the First Nation, had friends that were black, had friends that were Jewish, everything else, until my father started this program. Then, you know, first the black friends went. And then then the the First Nation friend, he really couldn't do anything about it. And he, he in his mind, he rationalized that they would be yet another subset of Nazi. And it, my father saw everything for a very black and red colored lens. And it's it's weird to have to admit that but odin's been pushing me to make this video obviously i'm not going to monetize it and you know it's obviously one of the things that for you heathens out there that watch a channel that wonder why i just don't come into heathenry and stay because i come in and i go out and i come in and i go up that's why i i was being groomed to be a nazi and i'm afraid i'd make a fantastic one if i just stayed in heathenry So now you've all unsubscribed, I'm sure, but it was just, it was one of those things he wanted me to face. It was, you know, it was definitely something that came up during the video, and it was like, this is why I don't belong here. This is why I have imposter syndrome, because, you know, all these other people being great, you know, talking about, you know, Declaration 127 and everything, um, they, they weren't raised in that. They don't know what they're actually fighting against. I was raised in it firsthand, and I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be fooled in the ideology. I know what it's like, you know, I've watched other people that they were either raised as a Nazi or they, they got taken in by, you know, um, a neo-Nazi group or something. It's it's a brotherhood. It's if we all stick together, you'll be you'll be taken care of. We love you. We understand you. We're your family. It's very alluring that way because it's a place for you to fit in. And if you get into that brotherhood, they'll do anything for you. At least they promise you they will. Now, this white utopia never works out because it's just never going to work out. And people become disillusioned and leave. But while you're in it, while you're in that brotherhood, and my father had to have been for a time, they'll do anything for each other. They will. They'll back each other up. And I've read articles by people that were, you know, they were in white hate or they were in QAnon or they were you know, neo-Nazis, and the brothers will try to take care of each other, and that's the scary, alluring part. They will t they will take care of you. And I said, I just don't know, fa you know, all father, that if you have me full-time heathen, I won't end up with those people. And he's just, he wants all the cards out on the table. <laughs> and he he's like, you know, this is, this is something I want you to do. I want you to be heathen, but you're going to have to just, you know, put your cards on the table and talk about this. I said, no heathen group with any decent, you know, morals or moral compass would have me when, you know, they would know how he was raised. And he's like, nope, you're putting your cards on the table. So for all you lurking heathens, there you go. So, you know, you can feel free to, to say below. Obviously, I don't have Nazi memorabilia behind me. Obviously, I don't come on, you know, speaking about this, that, and the other 
So I don't have any Nazi sympathies, but I was raised in that. And they would put the pins on me and they would put, I didn't even know what, you know, Hitler Youth and that was. They would encourage me to wear the Hitler Youth pins and to always remember. And it was really, really weird. And I'm just glad by the time we, like, would put stuff together to go out, I would, um, I would, you know, have... American stuff because by then my dad was mad at the Nazis and we stopped being Nazis but it was a thing I was groomed for for a time can I really consider myself having been a Nazi when I don't didn't realize that's what I was being groomed for I don't know I see myself as being innocent of it but at the same time I wore those damn pins and I studied the books and my father was grooming me and I didn't see anything wrong with it because my father made it all a game. And this was, you have to remember, he presented it as the goodest, bestest thing in the universe. So I have a lot of soul searching to do is what I have to do. But, you know, what can I do? So um, I didn't want me to keep it real with you guys. And, you know, with YouTube being like um, YouTube's treating, you know, certain people dressing up in those uniforms and that and acting like they are. As a game, it wasn't a game for a lot of people, and it's still not. For some people, they take it dead serious, so that's something to consider. But, you know, the heathens can feel free to chime in below. I don't think I'd ever be welcome among any heathens, not at least any respectable ones. Um, so, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.